All right, we are live. And there is always this like um, uncomfortable delay um, when you go right. live. We are live. And there is and now I can this, hear myself. Like, so where's that coming uh, from? Uncomfortable delay um, when you go right. live. We are. Okay, now we're live. And now we can't see ourselves and hear ourselves. This happens Perfect. to me all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, everybody. You know me. This always happens. Is it opens Facebook and then I don't know. Anyway, yeah, long story yeah. short. <laughs> chaos. That's the story of my life these days. But we're going to roll with it. And today I have a great guest with me. And I'm so excited because Danielle Mendoza was on the podcast and interviewed with me. And we had a phenomenal conversation about writing a book and how to start writing a book and kind of frame your book so that you can be seen as an authority and expert in your niche, but also use that to leverage your own business to grow to seven figures and beyond, however far you want to grow. And so we were talking a couple of weeks ago and we're in the same mastermind and we've really become friends, which I'm so, I feel so blessed to have had that happen. But we were talking about how we can support each other. And I was like, please come live in my group because she's launching a very special program. And I think that you guys will be very interested in it. Plus, we're going to talk about writing a book today and how that can help you and how you can get unstuck, so to speak, if you're feeling like, yeah, someday I'm going to write a book. Because honestly, if you keep putting it off, it'll never happen. So without further ado on my end, Danielle, I'm going to ask you to introduce yourself and then we'll just dive into the meat of the conversation. Yeah, thanks so much for having me, Robin. I really appreciate it. And I am so excited to talk to your audience today, especially this idea of growing your business, creating a powerful business without spending all of your time on social media. Um, a book is a great tool for that, but we'll get more into that. Hi, everybody. I'm Danielle Mendoza. I live in Southwest Florida, and I'm a bespoke book consultant, and I'm helping entrepreneurs write books that allow them to grow their business. So we're not talking about just writing any book. We're talking about writing the book that will make it possible for you to reach more of those people who need to know you and need your help. And I think what I do is pretty unique in the sense that we're writing a book that's kind of a hybrid memoir style. So we're not just writing a nonfiction informational book where we're telling everyone about your expertise and what they need to know. We are going to share that with them, but we're going to share it through your stories because stories are so much more powerful. And you know, it's funny, I was telling someone the other day about what I do and they're like, oh yeah, that's like so much more in the feminine than a lot of nonfiction books. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. I never thought about it, but yeah, I guess storytelling kind of has a feminine energy relationship connection kind of vibe to it. Um, and so I thought that was really neat. You know, I love that. And it's not necessarily about the doing part of it, because the way you do it, it's more of the feminine energy in terms of you're, you're approaching it with ease and grace. There's, you're creating that framework and then you're bringing the stories out of people to help them tell the stories and tell them in a way that is going to resonate with their audience and their potential clients or keynote people looking for keynote speakers or the heads of, you know, big conferences and the people that are going to give them additional opportunities to grow their clientele, but also grow the awareness of their business and their brand. Absolutely. When I wrote my first book, Manifest Success, my business was like a dinky little business. Like it, it was brand new as of June of 21, my business consultancy was brand new and I'd been doing the work with other bigger brands, but I decided to finally step out on my own. I know a lot of people here can probably relate to that. You have an expertise. It's, it's not an expertise for no reason. It's not like one day you wake up and you're going to like do a new thing and call it your expertise, but you decide to start a business with your expertise. And while the expertise isn't new, the business is, and it can feel really hard to get off the ground. And I took a daring leap and I was like, you know what? I've always wanted to write a book. I see where there's a need for this in my market and I'm just going to go for it. I'm just going to write this book. And it was published in September of that year. And I mean, I started landing clients. I've been featured in the media. I've been featured on podcasts very, very quickly. My business grew very quickly, all because of the book, all because I had this authority builder piece to say, 
here it is. Like here are my thoughts and ideas and also my stories so they could get to know me. And I just mm -hmm. saw the power of it. And then moving through networking and people saying, oh, interesting. I've wanted to write a book. I know you don't do that, but can you help me with this? So out of that, this current iteration of my business was born where I do help people with that. And I'm just loving it because it's so amazing to see kind of like the brightness in someone's eyes when they see the connection between their personal stories and what they've gone through and their business today. You know, it's easy to compartmentalize those things and think, oh, they're kind of separate. Like, what I do isn't really related to what I was doing 20 years ago, but that's not true. You have been moving through your life learning the whole way, and you bring all of that to the table as an expert. And so it's fun to help women connect those dots and just lean into the power of their own story. Oh my gosh, you said so many things just then that really resonate with me and really resonate with the message that I share as well. And that is that we're our own unique individuals and we've been on these God-given journeys that have led us to right to where we are today. So we can look at our life and think, well, that has nothing to do with what I'm doing today. However, every single thing, every experience, every interaction has formed us, formed our responses to things. And we've learned from the mistakes, the failures, the ups, the downs. And we can take all of that now to help someone else. And I love that you talk about bringing stories into this because those stories from 20 years ago may seem completely silly or frivolous or unimportant, but they are part of what formed you and what led you down this journey to, to, to really um, garner the expertise that you have today. And, you know, in, during the podcast, Danielle, we talked about like that framework and telling the story. And when we're talking about writing a book, I mean, having had the experience of publishing a book myself, you really do need that that framework, that guidance to do this. And I don't want to give like all the goods away in this interview, of course, because I want people to come to you and, and learn more about you and have that conversation with you to have you help them and guide them because your gifts are so incredible in terms of how you approach this and you bring out the, the very best in people to tell their stories. So, but I would love to just touch on briefly that framework because everybody can go listen to the podcast and I will put the link to the podcast in the show notes too. So I know we've shared it before, but we'll share it again, just in case, because it's, we talked about so much. It was just so, so good. But anyway, let's just like briefly touch on that framework and how to tell those stories and bring everything forth so that we can connect with our audience. Yeah, having that framework, I think is so important. Like we were talking about the start of this chat, you know, it's such a feminine thing to kind of flow through stories and be open and relational. And anytime we're in business, if we're operating out of the feminine without a touch of the masculine, then we just end up kind of off the rails. We need that masculine container for the feminine to flow into. And that's what I like to think the framework does is it sets up that container, that kind of like expectation of where the creativity can flow so that it does it in a way that's cohesive and makes sense and actually communicates, you know, what you're looking to communicate. But I think the most common mistake in storytelling is using the framework of beginning, middle, and end. We often think about that, you know, like once upon a time, you know, then this all happened and then they lived happily ever after. That's kind of like our <laughs> earliest introduction to stories. But really when it comes to sharing a story in a powerful way, we want to think of what was the context, like what was happening at the time and what went down. And then we wanna talk about what's the shift, what's the aha or the insight that we had or that a client had. And then we wanna move into the third part of that framework, which is why does this matter? What's the importance? So we look at the context, the shift and the importance. And in that way, we're able to really highlight these things in a way that's not only memorable to people, because when you just give someone information, it, it's not very memorable. You know, if you're like, the stove is hot, they're like, uh, yeah, okay. But if you're like, oh my gosh, one time I went and put my hand on the stove and I burned it and it hurt for three days, you know, now all of a sudden they're like, oh yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And then you talk about why it matters for the future. And that really cements it in, that gets them to pay attention to this piece of information. And it also makes it more interesting 
because nobody wants to read a boring book. In fact, most books are only read a third of the way through. So if you want your book to be read cover to cover, you really do have to keep the reader's attention. And we can do that through that storytelling framework. I, I love that you brought that in, that only a third of the books are, or no, most people only read a third of a book. But is that right? Yeah. So yeah. that's really important, especially for nonfiction books, because let's face it, some of these business books are downright boring and it's all I can do to pay, go page to page. And it can take a long time to finish it. So you want to engage your readers. And this is a great way to do that because You've had your experiences, but your clients have also had experiences. And so that lends to even more stories and more opportunities for you to write about, right? Absolutely. And we can also bring in stories of, you know, famous figures and celebrities and people that others know about. You know, in my book, Manifest Success, I wrote about Gwyneth Paltrow in one of my stories about something that happened to her in business and you know why she was able to capitalize on it and what that meant and connected it to the insight that I wanted my reader to take away from that chapter. And that's what's really important is connecting these stories to the information so that it's not information standalone because that's what's boring. And even stories stand alone. It's like, okay, you told me this story um, it might even inspire me. It might even touch me emotionally, but it doesn't really matter if it doesn't give me something to aspire to and then motivate me to move towards that thing. Especially when we're writing a book for business, we want to inspire people, give them a new aspiration and provide the motivation for them to take action. I mean, that is how people get results. And so that's what we want to do with our books. Absolutely. So let's switch switch gears just for a second, because, you know, we're talking about writing a book and how many stories we can tell and how we can tell those stories to have an impact. But at the end of the day, when we write a book, we know we're not going to get rich from that book, per se, and the sales of that book. But there are opportunities to, I'm going to say air quotes, get rich off of writing a book. And those include things like getting speaking engagements attracting more clients, getting PR opportunities, and other things. So I would love for you to touch on that, because if there's anybody in the audience listening who's thinking, ah, someday I'll write a book, I don't have time to write a book now, the question really becomes, why not? And if you keep waiting, you lose opportunity. So if you want to grow faster, this is a great way to do that. But I would love for you to expand on that. Absolutely. So you're spot on. It's not about selling the book. I mean, you know, we're, we're not Stephen King. We're not JK Rowling. It's not one of those things where we're setting out to be a genius author. We're authoring to share our genius and that looks very different. And so what we can do then is like you're saying, we can leverage that book. We can use it as a tool in our business to leverage for new opportunities. And the end game from all of it is always to bring new clients into your business. So whether you're leveraging it for speaking on stages, for getting new podcast interviews, for being featured in the media, all of that has the end goal of attracting more people into your ecosystem and then nurturing them through to eventually become a client. So when I work with someone and we lay out the outline for their book, we're looking at how do we weave a golden thread of nurturing through their book? What's that bigger idea that we need to present to the reader so that by the end of the book, they're like, Robin is my gal. Like I want to jump in and do business without being on social media, right? So it's like, how would we make the stories weave into that bigger picture of what's possible for them so that by the end of it, they are ready to take action with you. And so we also use the book. So it's, it's kind of interesting. We use the book on both ends. So first we use it to leverage for increased visibility. Then when we have those visibility opportunities like speaking on a stage, we wanna give that book away as a gift to everyone in the audience. And since we are smart business women and we are focused on stepping onto stages and into interviews, that have an audience similar to our own, we know that there's gonna be people in that audience who are excited about that book. They're going to read it. We embed a leveraging tool into that book, usually some kind of lead magnet. So now you've got people excited about you, they're reading your book, 
and they're like, oh, I do want to take action on this. Like, yeah, I do want to know what I can do to spend less time on social. And so then they download your thing, they get on your email list, and you have the opportunity to nurture them to becoming a client. So if you're able to add just 600 people to your email list in a year, and that's not a whole lot, you know, that's, that's what, 50 a month? I mean, it's not even that many people. If you get that many people onto your list by the end of the year, if your signature program is $5,000, you can expect a very conservative email sales rate of 4%, 24 new clients. And 24 times 5,000 is 120,000 more dollars of revenue in your business just from leveraging those opportunities, just from giving away your book. And you don't have to give away the print version. You can give away the digital version, which costs you nothing. So you're talking a very profitable return on investment. Mm -hmm. I love that. And I want to emphasize too, because if you don't have a signature method or model that you've created and trademarked or copywritten, it doesn't mean you can't write a book about yourself, your life experiences or any other topic you want to write about. Because even, you know, you, you can use me as an example. My book is on anxiety and my journey with anxiety. And I wrote the book to help teens and their parents with anxiety. And you could look at that and say, oh, well, she wrote a book for parents and teens. What does that have to do with her business? Well, here's the thing. Entrepreneurship is anxiety provoking, right? So there you have it. But not to mention, I am invited to be a guest on podcast. I'm invited to be a keynote speaker all around the book, but who's in those audiences? My soulmate client. And so it isn't prohibitive. Just if you, if you write a book that may not be specifically related to your business, you can still use that book to increase the size of your email list, to attract soulmate clients, to get speaking engagements, and all of those things, like Danielle just said, that ultimately end up increasing your profits, your revenue at the end of the year. Absolutely. And it's really about touching on, you know, what is the mindset of your soulmate client? right? So your soulmate client is going to be nervous about stepping into the business world, not knowing what to do, like wondering, how do I even make this happen? Wanting help along the way, right? To ease that anxiety. So it makes perfect sense for you to link a book on anxiety mm -hmm. to what it is that you do. And the same can be true for so many people. I mean, we can talk to these very broad concepts of, you know, maybe confidence or learning to do what you love or, you know, anything that relates to kind of what your ideal person is looking for, even though it, like you said, it doesn't directly have to do with how you help them in the process. You don't need a methodology or framework for that. Now it's a very powerful place to share a methodology or framework if you do have one, but I think too many people hold themselves back and they're like, well, I'm just not ready yet. You know, I don't have this trademarked thing behind my name, or I don't have a million dollars in my business and nobody's going to want to read my book if I'm not already a household name. And it's like, that's not true. I mean, I can't tell you how many books I've pulled off the library shelves just because the book looked interesting. I have no idea who wrote it and it didn't matter. I wanted the information in the book. Yeah. It's the lies we tell ourselves and the lies that hold us back. And it's the same thing, you know, we can say, okay, that's Satan telling me a lie. He's causing me to doubt. He's causing me to hold me back. But here's, here's the thing. You have an incredible program that makes all of this so easy that eliminates those lies because you take people through this process step by step. So let's talk about your, what you are launching because you have a new beta writing group, right? And yeah. it's coming up very soon and you have this incredible methodology that you're going to be teaching and people will literally have at least part of their book written right through the program the whole book yeah the idea is the whole oh. book yeah in six months so it's actually a hybrid group which i'm really excited about so there's a large one-on-one -on -one personalized element to it which i think is missing from a lot of group experiences you know I don't know about you, but I've signed up for groups before and you, you get a bunch of videos and then maybe you have like a group session where you come together, but personalized access to the person who's facilitating that group 
is very, very limited. And that is not what this is. This is all in, we start with a one-on-one -on -one to develop the entire outline for their book. And then we come together as a group to keep each other accountable and to check in on our challenges, as well as get creative edits from myself. So I'll be reading every single manuscript as it's being written and I'll be providing creative feedback because that's part of what I do. And it's so valuable to do that in a group because now if you're sitting there with three other women and we're talking about your book, they're getting takeaways from that as well. They're having insights about how to approach a story that's a little tricky in their book or how to connect it to what it is they're looking to present as the takeaway. And, and those things are so valuable to be able to do those together. So, and then not to mention the networking, like you and I have become fast friends through a group. And then also you've got these other women cheering your book on. And that means a lot because mm -hmm. when you go through the book writing process, you know, it's easy to get excited at publishing time. Everyone's like, oh my God, you're doing it. You're publishing it. You've got this date. The book is out there. But the writing process can be a bit of a trudge because it can be kind of lonely. You're like, does this even make yeah. sense? What am I even doing here? Like, does anyone actually want to read this? Is this interesting? So when we have the group together, we'll be able to, you know, continue to encourage each other not to give up. And yeah, we're looking at having the whole book written in just six months, which I know sounds daunting to most people, but with my process, it takes no more than 20 to 30 minutes a day. And that's not even seven days a week. I'm talking five, maybe six days a week of spending 20 to 30 minutes on your book and having one chapter done every two weeks, 12 chapter book. That's what the outline lays out. And uh, you'll have a finished manuscript, like strong and ready to go. Mm, I love that. And when you break it down that way, it seems easier. Like when you think, oh, 12 chapters, I can come up with 12 topics for each chapter. But then when you weave in stories too, I think it makes it flow so much better. Um, even as you're doing it, because you kind of go down that path of, oh yeah, I remember this. And I mean, obviously sometimes, depending on what you're writing about, it could be a little bit hard or challenging, but for the most part, especially if you're sharing your expertise and what you've learned, it, it brings that sense of gratitude for everything that you've been through and that excitement to then be able to share and help other people. Definitely. And there are times where, you know, your own writing can be kind of triggering maybe from a struggle you had in the past. And I've encountered that with many women I've worked with, you know, my, my multi-author book is all about stories of overcoming. So we're looking at a lot of those harder times in life. So I've become, you know, very well-versed in holding space for women writers to move through the emotions that recur as they're, you know, sharing these stories again for the first time in a while, usually and uh, my coaching background helps a lot with that because I come to the table in that respect as a coach with the skills to help someone move through that and shift back into that gratitude, like you're saying, feeling really good for where they're at now and all they've gone through and thankful for the lessons that it's taught them. Yeah. So one last question, Danielle, and then we'll wrap up, but I would love for you to differentiate what you do from the average book coach that someone might hire? Ooh, such a good question. So first of all, most book coaches don't come to the table with a business background like I do. So I have a background in business management and marketing. So you can be sure that your book is written with the intent and the possibility of scaling your business. And the other thing is a lot of book coaches don't provide any kind of framework. They might talk you through your ideas a little bit, but they're really just a sounding wall. So everything is coming directly from you. When we work together, I'm taking a look at, okay, what's the idea? Like, what do you wanna write about? But then constantly helping you shift back as a consultant, not a coach, helping you shift back to the strategy of nurturing clients into your business and making sure all of that connects. And then I have this process that I've laid out for how to write this book in a short amount of time with ease. And I know how to make it fun. Um, your book coaches will provide emotional support, but I find sometimes they're a little bit too much in the emotional side of things. So I guess you can think of it as like, I can be those masculine bumpers for that feminine creative energy to flow and that book to come out of your brain and onto the page. Oh, I love that so much. And you know, Danielle, we didn't mention this before, but when you publish a book, 
And that becomes your content strategy. And you can break out pieces or pull out pieces of the book. You don't have to be on social media anymore because you now have this tool that is getting you notoriety, recognition, memorability that you don't have to constantly be creating content, but you're you're able to just be kind of present because now you have more opportunities on to be found on Google. It's search engine optimization. You have content for your blog straight from your book and you have more people discovering you through multiple avenues so that you don't have to spend that time on social media begrudgingly like you did before. Exactly. Exactly. You have what I call this treasure trove of content that you can pull from over and over again. And the beautiful thing about a book is it's so much content. It's so in depth that we can pull from it every 12 weeks, possibly every, you know, 24 weeks, which is two quarters, different things out of the book, and then recycle that again, the next 24 weeks. So imagine that like every six months, you just go back to the beginning of your book and you pull content out of it again and you present it you know, in a slightly different way. And it's something you can keep doing for years on end. I mean, you're talking like five, six, seven, eight, ten 10 years. Imagine if you could develop cornerstone blogs, like you're saying, that get you found for the SEO. But then you know, as your business grows, you're like, I think I would like a little bit of a social presence. I just don't wanna spend my time there. Now it's really easy to hand your book over to a team member and have them posting because your thoughts and your words have already been captured in the book. And there's nothing you have to do to set up that strategy other than to say, start at the beginning and walk your way through. Yeah, I love it so much. All right, so I am going to put my affiliate link for your program in the comments. So if anyone is interested in joining the beta writing group, you can click that link and it will take you right to the program so that you can register and connect with Danielle and all that good stuff. Outside of that, how else can the people in the group, the members find you and connect with you? So I'm on Facebook. I'm also on Instagram at confident.concept, or you can email me hello at confidentconcept.com. Um, I'm always happy to hear from people. So even if you're not sure about writing a book, you just want to talk about your idea, you know, reach out, send me a message. I'll message you back. It is me on all of my social media. I don't have a team running any of that. So I am very available in that sense. And uh, yeah, there's only two spots left in the beta program. So if anyone's interested, be sure to jump in or, you know, if you have questions about what does that entail, what does it really look like, um, message me and we'll talk about it. All right, everybody, thank you so much for being here, for listening. If you have comments, be sure to leave them. And if you have questions, same thing, leave the questions. And I will make sure that Danielle sees them and can answer those questions for you. But I do encourage you to take one of those spots, two left. That's amazing. Congratulations on that. And everyone else, thank you for being here. And Danielle, it's always such a pleasure to be with you. Thanks so much for sharing your thank incredible you, knowledge, your brilliance, and your beautiful smile as well. So thank you. See you, everybody.